Hello and welcome back to chapter 10. This is kind of a, I think it's kind of a fun chapter. It's an interesting chapter. Uh, it is still within the purview of marketing, but it also has a flavor of entrepreneurship to it. Uh, it's really about launching new products and the new product development process. And so this is something that um, is of paramount concern to a new business, but it's also something that happens uh, in existing businesses as they look at uh, product line extensions or integrations into new markets or uh, the creation of new products. So let's see if we can make the slides work here. And when we say product in this case, we're not specifically thinking tangible products. Uh, we're also including services. So this could be um, an extension of a tangible good or the extension uh, and delivery of an additional service or a, a new type of service. And so uh, it's really any kind of line extension that you might experience uh, within marketing. So the chapter discusses some of these different types of product developments and I would encourage you that there are some PDFs uh, in the Moodle site that sort of show uh, some ways of thinking about vertical and horizontal integration, which are ways that you can move into uh, new and adjacent markets uh, within an existing business. But we can think about products that are new to a company. Um, so maybe if you're um, Coke or Pepsi and so you want to move into the vitamin water, you want to move into the non-carbonated beverages because you feel that there is, uh, you know, that the market is moving that direction and you want to make sure that you position your company to be a part of that. So those are products that are new to uh, new to the company. You can also make improvements to the existing products. So you can add features and benefits or subtract uh, non-value added items to sort of polish up your existing products to make them more attractive. Uh, to consumers, you can extend your product line into new areas um, and then you can move into new markets. So um, there's a lot of different ways that you can think about uh, extending your product uh, situation. One might be taking your product to or creating new products for your existing customers. Another way to think about it is uh, finding new customers for your existing products. There's a lot of different ways that you can uh, reorganize or reapproach how you think about your marketing and product extensions. So then there's a little bit of a discussion about entrepreneurial startups. Um, this has come up a little bit uh, in other chapters. I think of entrepreneurial ideas as um, those things that are on this list here as opposed to the small business uh, you could open um you could open a bookkeeping firm or you could open a hair salon or you could open uh or create a, a restaurant all of which are small business endeavors and they're uh really meaningful uh things to do and are uh provide a unique kind of lifestyle for an owner but an entrepreneurial endeavor, I think of as being a little bit more innovative, so something new, something that's um, different than what's been done before with the idea that there's going to be significant growth and with that growth, uh, profitability, uh, it's new opportunities and it's a incredibly, uh, it's a more risky endeavor because there's no, um, there's no template for how it's done. Um, so for example, you could open a franchise like, uh, like a subway shop and there's a pretty well-developed formula for how that is to work. But if you're going to create something that's completely new, that's never been done before, uh, you're going to have to solve every problem as uh, you become aware of it. And so it's a different kind of mindset and a different level of risk and uh, different overall goals in mind. Um, this is just a slide I found interesting, the sales from the new products. Um, you know, look it over when you get a chance. Um, product utility or product uh, benefits. 
Um, in marketing, lots of times we'll talk about uh, customer benefits uh, or product features. Uh, from economics, we'll hear the word utility tossed around a lot, which is basically the marginal utility is the utility in excess of the cost that you pay for the product. Um, so utility is created a lot of different ways. Um, and here are just four factors that um, that you might consider the time, the place, the ownership, the form. Uh, I would add the distribution, the delivery method, um, the features and benefits of the product. I mean, it's just a, sort of an endless list, but it's important as you think about new products that you really try to hone in on what the true benefits are because those are going to be the things that the consumer really values and it's going to be important that you maximize those benefits that those benefits are real that the consumer has a felt need in that particular uh, area and that you have the ability to communicate that your new product offering uh, solves a problem in that particular space so utility is kind of a important idea you need a way to evaluate product extensions or new product ideas. Um, and so here's a model. Um, you know, to give you a, a, a sense of how much work can be done here in some entrepreneurial uh, business programs or places of study, you can spend a whole term on idea evaluation. Um, and that's not just one class, that's literally a whole series of classes uh, where you're thinking about consumer behavior, you're thinking about uh, production and product features, you're thinking about um, you know, doing all of that market research that we discussed uh, in chapter nine. You know, all of these things take place when you're sort of evaluating uh, the idea. And the more evaluation you do, I mean, that takes time and energy, but good evaluation will kill uh, ideas before they consume an excessive amount of capital. So you want to uh, spend some time really working through this. And so identifying the customers, um, you know, will the customers, you know, can you monetize? Will the customers actually buy? Um, and then you know those benefits again and you can you can create a more robust idea evaluation model uh, than this but this is a, a, a starting point uh, from the chapter um, there's more terms thrown around in this chapter and every once in a while it's good for us to check in on the on the terms so an industry um, you, you can have the restaurant industry, you can have the beverage industry, you can have the car industry, you can have the medical or healthcare industry they're just a uh, you know, they're a subset of uh, the whole economy, but a fairly big subset where there's a lot of activity or things going on. Uh, competitors, um, you know, jockeying for market share. Uh, it's, it's sort of an established um, segment of the economy. A market is a, is a segment of customers that you might target or a market segment. And then this idea of, an, of a niche or a niche um, is an important idea. It's um, it, it may be a subset of even a market segment or a group that is really um, more narrowly defined that you can serve and because of it you will not attract um, a lot of attention. Uh, big business won't come after you because it's kind of a, a small area, but nonetheless, it's an underserved area that you can uh, provide services to and maybe enjoy some profit because you're kind of off the radar. Uh, product market evaluation. Uh, again, uh, just another model, another uh, checklist of how to think about things. Um, you know, who are the primary customers? Uh, are, are they businesses or individuals? Are they both? Um, and then how, uh, you know, who are the end users? Who are the consumers? How will I solve my place or distribution or supply chain problems? And how will I communicate 
Uh, do I need a push strategy that pushes my product through the channels or I do, do I need to combine that with a pull strategy to create awareness and demand amongst end consumers? Uh, so this is all part of your thinking about um, what it's going to take to launch new products or to create new product markets. Part of the evaluation process uh, in the markets besides all of the um, market research, consumer behavior, uh, the utility or the, the needs that are going to be met, met uh, by your new offering is some evaluation of is it financially viable. And this can take the form of a full-blown business plan. Uh, it can take the, the, uh, the form of some kind of an ROI, return on investment calculation based on what kind of capital you need to deploy in the new product endeavor. Uh, or it can, you can do something like a break-even uh, analysis, which um, we'll just introduce here. You'll see this more um, in the accounting chapter and in the finance chapter, and you'll see it more in a um, managerial accounting or budgeting class. Um, so this is just trying to think about what are the total fixed costs that I need to deploy. Those are the costs that... Uh, behave in a way that that doesn't change they're fairly uh, uh, stagnant or linear in how they behave and I'm gonna need to cover those fixed costs or I'm gonna need to pay for those fixed costs uh, and those fixed costs are gonna be paid for by the contribution margin of the product that I sell and the contribution margin is going to be uh, the price less um, the variable costs, which are the costs that move in relationship to the um, the amount of volume that I have. So let's say I'm going to uh, create a pizza parlor, which um, the fixed costs are going to be rents and certain utilities and um, a lot of the uh, property plant and equipment. Those are going to be fairly fixed costs. And then I'm going to sell the pizzas for a certain price. There's going to be variable costs, the pizza dough, the toppings, all of that stuff, a certain amount of the labor costs. They're all going to move up and down as my business gets uh, busier. But I'm going to take that price minus the variable cost. And that's going to give me a contribution margin that I can apply towards those fixed costs. When I sell enough units, then I'm eventually going to cover all of my fixed costs and start to become profitable. So this is a tool, one of many tools uh, that can be used in a in evaluation process. It's one of my favorites, um, so I was happy to see this uh, in the chapter. More on product development. Um, so this is thinking about the whole process now, and um, again, it's not all inclusive, but it's a very good starting point. Uh, all kinds of products or all kinds of endeavors are going to um, require that you expand or contract one of these uh, areas in the list, you know, depending upon the nature of the product offering, the risk, uh, the difficulty communicating, the financial sensitivity of it. Different areas are going to are going to grow in terms of how much attention they need, uh, depending upon the nature of what you're trying to uh, work with. And so that is a very quick overview of uh, product development or uh, uh, product extension. I think you could combine in this chapter or in this area of thinking uh, the idea of new ventures or new businesses. There's a lot of work being done now um, with design work to try to think about how to do better design or how to create better products. And so uh, this is kind of a uh, subset of marketing that is a growing field uh, of study at this particular point in time. So I hope you spend some time with the chapter. I uh, hope it dovetails nicely with chapter nine for you. And uh, again, we are now into the main functional areas of business marketing this week, and we'll take up one of the other functional areas next week. Thanks for joining.